Hey guys, Travis Gillespie here. We've been working with indirect measurements to solve problems, and here's another example for you. Use the similar triangles to find the height of the tree. I'm gonna sidestep for a minute right after I highlight similar triangles. Let's pretend you have a boss, and your boss wants you to go out and measure the height of this tree, but you can't do it directly. You don't have the tools, the ruler or a ladder or a rope to climb the tree to measure the height of it. So what we can do, if you can't measure an object directly, you can measure it indirectly. What we're gonna do is use our knowledge of similar figures here, in this case, similar triangles, and setting up proportions to help solve this problem. So the first thing I'm really asking myself is how were these triangles created? Well, let's pretend that the sun's out in the earth, shining down all over the earth, and whatever object it hits, it's going to create a shadow. So it hits a tree, it hits a person, and these rays are helping to create shadows here. So I know that along the ground, I've got a line that represents the length of the shadow, from base of the tree out to the end of the shadow. Also, the object itself is representing the height of this triangle, but how's that triangle created? Because the tip of this object and the end of this shadow if I were to connect a line to those, I would have a triangle. And in fact, we have a right triangle here. And the same thing with this person. It's created another right triangle. So I have similar figures, and all I'm going to do is set up a proportion. I've been showing you how to set proportions up as small to big. And as long as you match everything up correctly, your proportions will come out correctly. I'm gonna put a blank proportion here or your proportions will be set up to where you solve the problem correctly. But there's another way you can set proportions up. You can also set them up as, let's just say big on the left side and small on the right side. Now, can I reverse these and have the small on the left side? Sure. And the big on the right side? Absolutely. Can I have big on top and small on bottom? Sure. But this time we're gonna set it up so that we're using Small, uh, big on the left and small on the right. The reason I've set it up this way is if I were to take a highlighter or some marker and create a dividing line right here at the corner, I have a ratio set up as the height to the, to the length. So I have the height of the object to the length of the object. And if I were to do the same thing here again, I have the height of the length. And if we think of it as a proportion being set up, I could just put an equal sign in between uh, we'll fix that equal sign real quick. Put an equal sign in between, and I have this ratio of h to 7, or h to 7 here, is equal to 6 to 2. And we'll put 6 to 2 here. So I have all the big values on the left-hand side, all the small values on the right-hand side. Cool. So the next step, what I want to do is take the cross products. I'm going to multiply 7 times 6 and h times two. Okay, so now I have two h is equal to seven times six, or two h equals 42. Next question I've gotta ask is how do I isolate the variable? Well, we do it through division. I'm going to undo multiplication of two by dividing by two on this side. If I do it to this side, I have to do it to the other to keep the equation balanced. Okay, so the two and the two cancel out, and I am left with h is equal to, 42 divided by two is 21. The most important piece of information, you don't wanna forget it, are the units. So let's go ahead and plug them in, 21 feet. So the height of the tree equals 21 feet. Thanks guys, see you in the next video.